What's your biggest frustration right now in the, in the House? I think that the biggest frustration is being uh, a freshman in the minority party. Um, uh, as you can imagine, being uh, in the minority party, we don't set the agenda. And so it's pretty frustrating to not uh, be able to get the issues that we want uh, addressed. And, and the issue is job creation. It's about making sure that we employ people and that people that we employ have the right to collective bargain, have the right to unionize. I mean, like, I think that just getting them moving along on the economic spectrum um, is really important. I think that, um, uh, you know, the debt ceiling is something that we're talking about in Washington a lot. And, you know, I think the first thing you learn when you get a checking account is that you've got to pay your bills, right? Um, and the thought that, uh, that we could somehow default on America's obligations um, it's just scary to me, I, and, and they're using it as a political pawn, I think. So it's quite frustrating that um, August 2nd is coming around and we may not, we may not be able to meet our obligations. And what I don't, I don't think people really appreciate is that um, the debt ceiling is about your, America's current obligations. And so to not raise it to pay our current obligations means that we won't be able to pay um, military salaries, we won't be able to pay veterans fair, you know, veterans benefits, we won't be able to pay social security. I don't think people really get that, that you know, it's a no-brainer that we have to raise it. Do we have to figure out a way to show fiscal respect, restraint going forward? Absolutely. I think nobody, nobody would uh, say that we shouldn't figure out, you know, spend our, our money more wisely going forward. But right now we're in the pickle that we're in and we need to figure out a way to be able to address it. How, how in your uh, in your caucus and the discussions you're involved in are you uh, are, are y'all talking about and addressing the issue? I mean, the Republicans seem to be able to use these issues politically when they're really doing people so much harm. Is is there a strategy session you know being talked about in terms of coming up with a counter strategy to 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 let people know that this is fooling them and they're they're not they're, absolutely. You know. I mean, you know, I think that Democrats every day we come out with a we have a, a messaging. Um, email that comes out uh, every day. And our caucus has really been great about trying to centralize what our message should be. And our message has to be to protect the middle class. Our message has to be job creation and to strengthen Medicare. I mean, frankly, I think that the, the Republican budget was a, was a, you know, was really a, a, a gift to, a, to Democrats because that budget that was passed from the House does cut Medicare. And we need to be, I don't think people realize that. And so part of our job is to get the message out, the word out about how 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 bad their policies are, right. how it will affect everyday Americans. I mean, know? how about the Tea Party and they you know they're 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 for cutting the deficit but they don't want it to eliminate the Bush tax cuts for the rich. Right. Contradiction there, I mean shouldn't I mean seems to be more messaging to let people know that in in, in, in provocative ways. Right. Right. No, you're absolutely right. I mean I think that uh, it's really hard to justify giving huge subsidies to big oil companies that already are gouging us at the pump and to give um, you know the wealthy continue to give them tax cuts when when others are hurting I think it's about shared sacrifice it shouldn't just be on on, um, on, on the backs of working class people